All right. So, my name is Oliver Aronfeld. Uh, you didn't make any jokes about my last name, so thank you. <laughs> uh, just in case you're wondering, I'm not related to Yasser Arafat, so, uh, you know, don't worry. <laughs> All right, so uh, this one's about AWS uh, Elastic Beanstalk. And um, so what we're going to deploy today on Beanstalk, and this is uh, this little beautiful, tiny little web application I wrote, and it's running on uh, Node.js. Uh, Express framework and DynamoDB, and I'm going to show you how you going to deploy this and manage this. So, for those of you who don't know what uh, Beanstalk is, um, it's a service that allows you to deploy and manage your application on the AWS cloud without really worrying about the infrastructure that runs your application. So, um, you really just upload your application, and Beanstalk will take care of you know, almost take care of the rest for you. So, you know, it will take care of the provisioning of capacity. It will take care of the load balancing, of the scaling, and even provides application health monitoring. So um, we're going to you know, take a deep look into these capabilities. So basically, it you know, builds you this, what you <laughs> see here. So before we start, I wanted to um, tell you about just two little concepts that you should know about Beanstalk before we get started. Um, one is the application. And the other one is the environment. So um, you know your application. So on your on your left, on your uh, right side, on your right hand side, you're seeing an example. So your application is really you know your application that you want to build. Let's say you know you want to do a new startup called FalafelDeliveryHero.com. So this would be your application. But of course, um, in order to you know build this application, test it, roll it out, um, you usually have different environments that you need to use, right? Usually um, you have a production environment, of course, you have a testing environment, you might need a staging environment, you might even have a performance testing environment. So these environments, um, you know, can, you, can, you can create these environments on Beanstalk and it will set up all the resources for you for these particular environments. Okay, so let's have a look how this works. So I'm already logged in, and I'm uh, in the console. And right now I'm in the console of uh, Elastic Beanstalk. So let's create a new application here. And first of all, of course, we need to give uh, the application a name, surprise. So let's call that TLB Demo 2015. And you know, description is optional. I just leave it blank. So then it asked me which kind of environment I want to create. Now, we just go with a web server environment. Um, I am not going to show the work environment, which is also pretty neat, because um, basically it allows you to create you know, an asynchronous architecture to do some kind of background processing, if you like, background processing of tasks, totally, totally asynchronous from your web tier. Um, but in this case, we just go with a web server environment. So let's create the web, uh, web server environment. And it's going to ask me for a profile name. So this is um, the role, which every resource that is uh, you know, spawned by Elastic Beanstalk will assume. So in this case, we just go with a, our default. Now, then I can um, configure my environment type. And in this case, you know, I have a huge variety or selection of different platforms that I could use here. Uh, PHP, Node.js, uh, IS, Tomcat, Python, Ruby, uh, even Docker. Um, I can deploy all kinds of different applications on Beanstalk. Now, in this case, uh, let's go with a Node.js environment because uh, I think it's currently the most, you know, uh, posh, uh, po you know, posh technology that you could use apart from Go. So let's use Node.js. And it will even ask me, also ask me for the environment type. So of course I could do a single instance environment if I like, but usually what I want uh, is a load balanced auto scanning environment, you know, that just takes care of all the capacity provisioning for me. So let's go with a load balanced auto scanning environment type. Um, then it's going to ask me about the application I want to deploy, and I have uh, three different possibilities there. So I can just go with a sample application that will just be deployed by Beanstalk, like a you know, Hello World program that just says, you know, everything worked fine, you're good to go. Or I can upload, of course, my own application 
um, from my desktop, or I could uh, specify an URL to an S3 bucket if I like to. So in this case, I just go with a sample application, and we deploy a real application afterwards. Um, then, as you can see, I also have the options to specify the deployment limits. So that means I can configure how big the batch, uh, batch sizes are uh, that AWS you know, is updating when I'm doing a new deployment. So usually, you can specify a batch size in terms of percentage, or you know, as as, as uh, you know, the number of instances that uh, Beanstalk should update at a time. So, um, you know, for instance, you might have um, 10 instances running your application, and when you're doing a new deployment, you want to reduce the downtimes as much as possible. So you don't want to update all your 10 instances at once, because then obviously you have downtime. You just want to you know, take different batches of these two instances, update them, and if all went well, take the next batch, update it, and so on and so forth, till the entire fleet is updated. So in this case, let's go with the standard option of 30% uh, of the fleet at a time. Um, then Danny asked me for you know, my environment name, and of course, the URL that I want to use. In this case, I would go with this name here. Let's check if it's available. It's available, cool. So let's hit next. Then I could, if I like, I could also uh, spawn a database instance if I like to. Um, I usually don't know why you do that, because then your database is you know, really uh, attached to your Beanstalk environment. What that means is if you terminate your environment, you also terminate your database, then this may not be something you want. Okay? So I just leave it. Because I, I don't need a relational database anyway. I'm using DynamoDB for this demo. And um, you know, then you get a huge uh, you know, pile of options um, to, you know, regarding the configuration details. I just want to highlight a few of them. I won't go through every one of them. But uh, one I want to highlight is definitely is the instance type. So you can specify the instance type your app should run on. So you, know, you can choose from every instance type um, AWS offers. So in this case, I just go with T1 Micro. You can also uh, select a key pair in case you want to SSH into your instances. Uh, I don't need that as well, so I just leave it. Um, you, know, you have different options regarding load balancing, uh, rolling updates, stuff like that. So you can have a deeper look yourself if you're trying this demo out. And you can specify the, uh, the root volume type of the instances. So it should be magnetic, or if you want an SSD, or provision IOPS SSD. Um, for this demo, we just go with a general purpose SSD. So I could also tag my environment if I like, but I don't need to do it right now. So and um, as you might know from other services on AWS, at the end you get you know, a review. Um, view of your settings. So let's check if everything's OK, I hope. So let's go for it. And um, then you just hit launch. And what it does is now it will set up um, all the necessary infrastructure for you on your behalf, uh, you know, including the instances, load balancing, auto scaling groups, all that kind of stuff. So you, need, you don't need to do this by yourself. That's the Beanstalk now takes care of this based on your configuration details that you entered with the wizard. So this may take a while, uh, depending on your configuration, you know, between two and four or five minutes. So let's use that time and do something else in the meantime. So oh, I forgot. I forgot. So this takes a while, but of course. I've prepared a second demo, which is already set up. So as you can see, now let's, you know, let's do a mental shift and uh, fast forward three minutes. And um, what we have here is now our uh, deployment. And uh, let's go with that. And what you're seeing here is you know, our kind of Hello World program now that's deployed on our environment. 
So this is all cool. But um, usually, I want to deploy my own application because uh, you know, running this uh, Hello World application, you know, is kind of senseless. It just says you or tells you, "Yep, I'm here. I'm running. Everything's okay." So now we're ready to do the serious stuff and deploy our own application. So let's do that. Um, in order to do that, I just fire up my terminal, and um, what, I've, what I have here is a Git repository. Um, with the application that we're going to deploy. As you can see, um, all the files are in the staging stage. And um, let's do a commit. Um, enter some nice message, you know, initial. Commit. And um, you know, the next step you're usually doing is deploy to the, to the remote. So let's do that as well. Okay, so, right, so now it pushes to my um, GitHub repository that, I, that I've set up. Okay, good. So now my application is on GitHub, but that's not where I want it to be. Uh, actually, my application should be you know, on Elastic Beanstalk, on this environment. So how am I going to do that? And actually, that's pretty simple with Elastic Beanstalk, because Elastic Beanstalk um, also ships, if you can say that, ships uh, with a command line tool called EB. And EB allows you, you know, to manually um, um, use uh, the Elastic Beanstalk. So, in order to set my repository up for deployment to Elastic Beanstalk, it's pretty simple. I just do EB init, and EB init will now talk to my uh, bean, to, to Beanstalk and list me all the possible applications I could use to deploy. So let's go with number two. That's the environment I have set up previously. It's called Tel Aviv Summit 2015 demo. And it's also going to ask, ask me which environment of this application I want to deploy it to. So I've already set up a production environment and a staging environment, as you can see here, down there. So let's go with the production environment. Sure, I mean, we just deploy right to our production environment, right? So I type one. And now, my uh, main branch of my Git repository is linked to um, the production environment of my Beanstalk application. So what I can do now is a simple EB deploy. And EB the deploy will do two things, actually. It will package my application, and then it uploads it to Beanstalk, and will set it all up. Okay. So, if not everything I'm telling you is a lie, yeah, we should see here now um, my production environment being updated. So this is because I just you know, typed in EB deploy, it uploaded my application, and now it's being deployed on my production environment. So this is all fine, but usually you know, things are a bit more complicated. You have you know, different branches, different environments, and you want to link different um, Git branches to different environments. So as depicted here. So I might, on the right hand, on, on your left hand side, there's my production environment, okay? And on your right hand side, there's my staging environment. As you can see, um, we just have rolled out a very fancy new feature, you know, featuring these Regalian or the Israel flag. Um, and we want to test, okay? This is good, how our customers reacting to that, is, our, is, is everything working fine? So we want to link the staging branch of Git to the staging environment of Beanstalk, and we want to link the production branch to the production environment of Beanstalk. So how are we going to do that? And again, as you might have guessed, pretty simple. Um, first thing to do is let's um, create a new branch in my uh, Git repository, and let's call it a staging. Okay, so now I have a new branch. So now let's do a tiny little um, change. So let's just modify the view a bit. Oops. So we're just inserting you know, a new line, nothing too special. So then we're going to commit again. So new feature. 
Okay, so, and then, again, I would push, and then I would type e -de e -de e deploy. Now, I don't want to uh, repeat myself all the time. I don't want to write all the time, you know, git commit, git push, e -de deploy. Uh, you know, I want one single command, maybe, that does the push, and if it was successful, just write deploys to beanstalk. So I'm going to do that. And, of course, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, the one I'm going to show you here is um, with uh, git aliases. So let me just create my upstream staging branch on my GitHub. All right. So what I can do is, uh oh, uh, what I can, okay. So I can type git config dash dash local allies, and let's call this new command push v, no, like push deploy. Um, is it equals? I forgot. Well, let's see. No problem. Let's see my script. Um, okay. So, what I want is, I want to do a git push, and after that, I want to do an ED deploy. Okay, so new configuration. And whenever I hit now or type git push d, it will do two things. Pushing to the remote repository and then after that deploying to my beanstalk environment. So let's try that out. Hmm. Okay, so something went wrong, of course, because it's a live demo. Um, Actually, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter because I've prepared. Huh? Yes, thanks. <laughs> that is actually the most important part, <laughs> and I forgot to tell you. So I need to link my uh, Git branch, my staging Git branch, to my staging environment, right, uh, of my Beanstalk environment. <laughs> so. I need to type while I'm in the Git branch, uh, in the staging branch. I need to type edus, and then the name of my staging environment, like this. Okay, so this command this command links my branch to the staging environment of Beanstalk. So now, if I do that again, I think it already has pushed. Yep. So now it's creating the package again and pushes it, pushes it to the staging environment of uh, Beanstalk. Now let's see if this is true. Yeah, and it's updating. Okay, um, for those of you who wonder how this is working actually, um, let's take a quick look at the config of e uh, Elastic Beanstalk. And as you can see here, in the config of Elastic Beanstalk, there are two entries. One that links the master branch of Git to my production environment on Beanstalk, and the one below is linking the staging branch of Git to the staging environment of uh, Beanstalk. So this is actually how it works. And I could link you know, a whole lot of different branches to different environments on uh, Beanstalk. Okay, so let's see. Um, if my production environment is ready, yes, it is. So let's have a quick look at it. Oh, beautiful. So that's the skyline of Tel Aviv. And uh, here we can see uh, the number of visitors that have been here. So these are the number of my uh, trial and errors here to got this uh, demo running. <laughs> oh, just kidding. OK, so now let's look what else we can do um, with this application or what Beanstalk provides us. Um, we have this configuration um, view, and as you can see, you have a lot of possibilities to tweak your environment the way you want to. Um, let's start with, you know, a very simple one. Let's go to uh, software configuration. You could, you know, you could uh, change your proxy server, your node version here, turn on G the GZIP compression, stuff like that. The thing I want to show you is. 
um, how simple it is to you know adding environment variables because actually uh, usually you need environment variables right be it for uh, providing the credentials for example for your relational database or to you know uh, maybe for feature toggles you know there are of different you know a couple of use cases where where uh, environment properties might make sense so let's go with the theme property and uh, make it light. So I want a light environment, uh, a light theme, not a dark theme, okay, for my web application. So let's um, apply that configuration. And um, as you can see here, in my application, you know, I'm just accessing the environment variables like I usually do with Node.js. But I can specify the environment variables um, directly on my view on uh, Beanstalk. So I can define my environment variables on Beanstalk, and I can access them you know, through the usual means of my framework or language or technology stack that I'm using. So um, now the environment is updating, of course, and what it um, does or does update. We can look through a couple of different um, options you have to configure your environment. So for example, let's take a look um, at the web tier here. So you can choose any time to go back to a single instance environment if you like to, for example. You can have all the possibilities to you know, tweak your auto scaling settings. So for example, you know, I can say then I can specify the minimum instant count of my environment or the maximum count of my environment if auto scaling is enabled. I can you know, choose or specify the availability zones where instances should be um, spawned, stuff like that. Also, what has been recently introduced now to, to Beanstalk is time-based scaling. So if you know that your workload varies depending on uh, you know, the time or date or whatever, uh, you can do also add time-based scaling rules. So if you know, you know every Wednesday, um, we have a huge peak on our web services called, because for some reason on Wednesday, all our customers go to our page and it's a very predictive workload, you can also add time-based scaling rules you know, to uh, take account for that. Um, second thing, of course, instances. So you can change the instance type, you know, uh, whatever you like, uh, stuff like that. OK, good. So let's take a look at my production environment. OK, as you can see here now, we have a light theme in case you see that. So before that, the nav bar was uh, black, now it's white. You know? So thanks to our environment variable. OK, so three minutes left. Um, OK, so as you're seeing here, um, I'm, I'm displaying the number of visitors. So I'm, 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 I'm actually storing this number in DynamoDB. So the question is, how or why are um, the instances launched by Beanstalk are allowed to access DynamoDB? Because per default, you know, the access is restricted, right? Uh, in AWS, um, everything is restricted per default, so we have to grant access explicitly to a resource. So the way it works, it's actually quite simple. As you might recall, at the beginning, when we created our environment, we um, applied a role to it, right? So every single instance that is spawned by Beanstalk can assume this role. So what I can do now, I can attach a policy to this role that allows every resource that assumes this role to access DynamoDB. So let's see how this works. Um, so I just go into our Identity and Access Management Service, so I am. And go to the roles. And actually, there's a lot of roles, because we're doing a lot of demos, so we need a lot of roles. So the role I'm looking for is this one here, AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role. This is um, you know, the standard role, which allows Beanstalk, or the resources Beanstalk creates, to access S3 and CloudWatch metrics, for example. 
And as you can see here, I've attached a policy uh, called DynamoDB Demo Counter Access. And if you look at it, what we're saying is every instance that assumes this role, you know, can execute any action on an MODB, but only on this table. And this does the trick, actually. So now every instance that is spawned uh, by Beanstalk can assume this role and has the privilege to access the DynamoDB um, database. OK. Um, last feature I want to show you is the dashboard. I think it's on a monitor. Right? Yep. And this is actually pretty nice. I think this is one of the most useful features, or most beautiful features of uh, Beanstalk, because it really gives you, you know, a one-glance view of everything that's happening right now in your environment. You know, uh, be it the average latency currently, or this number of requests, the CPU utilization, network traffic in, network traffic out, stuff like that. So just at one glance. And it also allows you to define your own rules and your own metrics and to define your own dashboard if you like to. But now I'm out of time. So um, the last thing I want to do is go to the staging environment and see if my deployment has worked. And yep, so this is our new feature. We hope you have a good time. So it worked. So uh, I hope you had a good time. Um, you can, you know, Email me, Twitter me at uh, oliverarafat.com. You know, uh, no, Oliver Arafat, you know, my Twitter handle. Don't be afraid of my last name. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from you. So thank you for listening.